nobody's going to be snickering at the person with diabetes, with heart disease, with cancer, saying it's all a stunt. The same attention and compassion should be brought to psychiatric disorders. Even calling a mental illness has a tendency to put it off to the side and make it something different, make it something secret. And I think that furthers the stigma sometimes. When people don't really know, they put you in a box and they think you're crazy. They start looking at you as though you are that label, instead of looking at you as though you're an individual. The media portray the villains in TV shows as having mental problems. And they always had a gun and they were shooting innocent civilians. When you think about people that have schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, major depression, whatever it is, we're talking millions of Americans. This is a public health issue. Why isn't that important? You know, back in the day, you always hear about people with mental illness. You know, they'd lock them in the basements and not talk about them. You know, crazy uncle or aunt, whatever. I, I don't know if it's just culturally or you don't air your dirty laundry. Maybe that's what it was considered. I used to say it was her story, but now I realize it's my story, which is our story. And our story began at about the age of seven or eight. Um, and it began as a secret. And it was a secret of sexual abuse from a stranger. You know, PTSD was something that, that people really didn't understand. And we were at a party and somebody had lit a firecracker really loud and he jumped on the ground. You know, nobody realized that he was having flashbacks. Growing up, Dad kind of became the thing to be avoided. He would think that the uh, house was bugged thought that things on the wall you know, had certain symbolism to them, and if they weren't just straight, he would maybe break everything on the wall. I grew up in a family where people didn't really talk about feelings. In my young adulthood, I ended up in therapy for the first time, and one of the psychiatrists where I worked said to me, well, I think you, you're depressed, and I think that you've probably been depressed since childhood. My older sister, Lisa, suffers from schizoaffective disorder and bipolar. She's attempted suicide once Christmas Eve back in 2004. She would do good for a period of five or six years, and then she just went recently through a period of in and out of a hospital five times within like three months. My story started when my husband, Martin, left the Navy. After he left, he became more and more depressed. He was irritable, grumpy, impatient. The long story short of this is that on December 1st, 1999, I came home from work and found him dead. He had hanged himself in our garage. We've heard people say, before I had a diagnosis, I had a name. We forget about the person and we forget that through our language or, or you know, what we're talking about or our actions that we are furthering that stigma. Instead of just facing it and asking, what's wrong? How can I help? They get behind closed doors and they whisper about you. That person's crazy. Anything that happens south of your eyebrows, it's generally okay to talk about. But the organ that is responsible for everything you say and do and who you are, if there's anything wrong with that, nobody wants to talk about it. The wrong message may be going out there that mentally ill people or people who struggle with mental illness can be violent, but more likely statistics show that someone with mental illness is more likely to be the victim of violence than to be violent. People second guess me. You can have a degree, have a PhD, working as a scientist in research, and unless you're really overachieving, people just bump you in a group every day. A lot of times this whole stigma thing revolves around the fact that how does it relate to me? You know, my sister has schizoaffective disorder, bipolar disorder, so she is less than me. Even though I worked in the business, you know, not it's not in my family. It happens to other families. People dismiss something and say, you know, just get some rest, you'll feel better. They look at me and say, oh my God, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> Depression, that's all in your head. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps and deal with your problems. Oh, you don't need to go see a shrink. They are probably absolutely well-meaning, but you want to stand up and say, time out. You don't know what you're talking about. This bracelet needs hope. 
This bracelet means I am part of a movement to stamp out stigma on mental illness. I think that just understanding what these symptoms are, that these are treatable illnesses, that there is hope for people with mental illness. Recognize disorders, re-educate the public, and reduce the instances. Reduce the number of people like my husband. One in four Americans are diagnosed each year with some type of a mental illness, so I think that's very important to recognize that there's a range of illness. If you see someone displaying out of the normal behaviors, pay attention to that. Yeah, you may be considered nosy or outstepping your boundary, but you also could be saving someone's life. There's a lot of different places that people can learn about mental illness and mental health symptoms, such as the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. There are websites such as the CDC website, the NIMH website. Equally as important are what we call wellness and recovery centers. They're um, nonprofit organizations that are run by people that have mental illness. I think talking about the biological aspects of it, okay, yeah, you're right, the brain is an organ and it's just an illness of the organ versus this unknown black hole of mental illness. What does that mean? Every family in this country has someone who is currently living with an addiction, a behavioral health disorder, they're in recovery, or they've lost someone. And, and helping our loved one or our friend or ourselves realize that it's, that it's not something to be ashamed of, that it's not something to be hidden. It's heartwarming to see people you know, being vulnerable and sharing that, and it heals that part of themselves which needs to be healed. The more people talk about it, the more it becomes general. So I think it's really up to all of us to help make the world a more accepting place of people with mental illness. I think that when we as a society get together and really push towards something, I think we can accomplish great things. And I really think it's the time for us to really address it and really stamp out the stigma.